Before we leave this section on models, I want to make a quick point about the distinction between theories and models, because a lot of what we said about models applies to theories as well. Theories are schematic representations about some part of the world. We draw conclusions from these representations. The conclusion is said to apply to the world. The reasoning is legitimate as long as the differences between the representation and what is being represented don't matter. So is there, in fact, a distinction between a theory and a model? Is there something implied by using one label rather than the other that is a distinction that scientists would recognize? The answer is yes, but it's not a sharp distinction. First, the conditions for when an analogy or an abstraction qualifies as a model or a theory are informal, which means there's some degree of vagueness involved and there's no formal rule that stipulates when one term applies and the other doesn't. Context is going to matter. Second, the term model is more commonly applied to what can be visualized or made concrete. And third, the term theory is more commonly applied to abstractions that are fairly formal and have very explicitly stated assumptions or general principles. However, in many cases, it is just as appropriate to call something a theory as to call it a model. And scientists are just as likely to switch back and forth between these terms, depending on context. Now, that said, there is a distinction between theories and models that scientists recognize and is reflected in common usage. If we're talking about representations that articulate high-level principles, that is, principles that apply to the broadest class of objects or processes or events as possible, then we're more likely to use the language of theories. But if we're talking about specific, concrete applications of these higher level principles to describe a particular class of systems, then we're more likely to use the language of models. For example, if we have a set of general principles that describe how gravitational forces behave, or what the nature of the gravitational attraction is, then we're going to call that a theory of gravity. Newton developed a theory of gravity. Einstein developed a theory of gravity. But when we want to apply these principles to a specific type of physical system with well-defined parameters, like the motions of a two-body system under the influence of gravity, like the sun and a planet, or a binary star system, then we're more likely to call that a model of a gravitational system. Similarly, we would distinguish Newtonian theory in the form of the basic principles of Newtonian mechanics and a Newtonian model of the solar system. Switching over to biology, we commonly talk about the basic principles of Darwinian evolutionary theory. And then we talk about specific models of evolutionary phenomena, like the evolution of a taxonomic category, like the horse, or the evolution of a reproductive strategy, like male versus female mate selection. Or in computer science, we might talk about high-level principles of machine learning and describe that as machine learning theory, and then describe a particular application of those principles for recognizing faces, say, as a model of facial recognition. But like I said, in many of these cases, people will use either term, theory or model, and nothing much turns on it. It's common, for example, for scientists to use the term Big Bang Theory and Big Bang Model. The Big Bang Model is a concrete application of the principles of general relativity and other branches of physics, but it's also a theory obviously. You're not saying anything false by calling it a theory. So theories and models are similar in the role they play in our reasoning about the world, in the sense that they both involve creating analogies that abstract from experience. But they may differ in scope and specificity and in the degree of abstraction. We're more likely to call something a model if it's narrower and more specific in its domain of application. However, when you have a situation in science like the one described here, where we have a higher level theory that allows us to build a wide variety of more concrete models, there is a real asymmetry here, a real parent-child relationship. The models inherit many features of the parent theory while also adding specific content not found in the parent theory. This is important to remember even if someone finds a reason to call the higher level theory a model and the lower level model a theory. There's enough flexibility in how these terms are used that you might encounter this, but that doesn't erase the real differences that are there. 
We don't want the terminology to obscure the hierarchical relationships between high-level theories and lower-level models that we often see in mature sciences.